It's Platt, and today I ask the question, reused yeast, will it ferment? That's next. So, uh, today I think we got a real interesting experiment. I want to thank a viewer, actually, because it was uh, a comment they posted that really uh, was the idea behind this video. Uh, Gilman's uh, YouTube handle is the word 8 followed by 6, 8, 6, 8, 6. Uh, don't know your real name, but I appreciate the comment. What he put down in the comment section was that he had tried one of my uh, homemade wine videos or whatever, and that when he, he'd done a full fermentation, was enjoying it, um, I, I presume he didn't refrigerate it, but said when he'd gotten toward the bottom, kind of like what we have here, that he had taken this, the, the, yeast sludge on the bottom, but there are also active yeast in there. There's still active yeast in there. And he ended up basically dumping it into the next batch, kicking the fermentation right off, and was up and going. He said he had no prompts. And I thought, that's absolutely genius. Why didn't I think that? Why haven't we had this video before? And it makes a lot of sense because if you've done any home brewing, you know that in a traditional home brew, even, even a kit, let's say we'll, we'll make a gallon of beer, We'll throw in the fermenter, we let it do primary for a week or two. We'll transfer into a secondary fermentation, leaving a lot of that dead yeast on the bottom. But we'll rack into secondary fermentation maybe another two to three weeks, another month, who knows. And then you have time to bottle. At bottling, you want to carbonate it. Uh, at the home brewer level, we're not doing forced carbonation, we're what's called bottle conditioning. How you do that is you throw a little bit of sugar in the bottle with your beer, and the yeast that's still left over, that's still reproducing, still doing their work, start eating that sugar and again pick up uh, CO2 production. That's how you get carbonation. So the yeast is still alive even after that month or so. Uh, there's a lot of dead yeast cells. There's not as many yeast cells. They're not as productive. But they're finishing off the last little bit of sugar. And again, when you add that sugar, you kick it right back off. So I thought, well, why don't we try a variation of that today? Uh, you might remember a couple weeks ago we did uh, an experiment to see if orange juice will ferment, and it does, and it ferments quite well. So I have a little bit of that left, and I got another bottle of orange juice, and we're just going to take what's left in here. Um, again, there's dead yeast, but there's also active yeast still in there. We're going to fire that back up with adding some sugar, and then we're going to add it to our other orange juice and see if we can re-ferment. Um, if you you know, like making orange wine, whatever kind of wine, and you always got a batch going, well, then you've got your next yeast going. And uh, everything, and you're using future generations of yeast cells to produce that next batch. So I thought today what we would do is, um, I'm not going to have enough headspace to ferment in the container, so I'm going to put this into my one-gallon uh, glass carboy. I've got it fermenting, or uh, sanitizing right now, but what we're going to do is I'm going to dump in my orange juice, add the sugar like we did the last experiment. We'll do a high drama reading, make sure we're in the same range because we're, we're kind of replicating that. At the same time, I'm going to add some sugar to this and see if we can get bubbling, see if we can get that fermentation kicked off. And then once we know that we got fermentation kicked off, we'll pitch it or add it to, to the rest of the orange juice and get her going. So let's get started. First thing I do is add our orange juice and sugar to our ferment. All right, so I put our half gallon of orange juice in our one gallon container. I added one cup of sugar like we did last time. So we're gonna do a quick gravity reading, make sure, you know, uh, sugar-wise, where, where we should be. Uh, let me see, oh yeah. Yep, we're about the same point, 1.080, which got us 10% alcohol by volume, so we've got plenty of sugar in the, uh, in the fermenter for the, the yeast that we reactivate to eat on, so we're good there. So we're going to set this aside, and next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to restart this fermentation. Now what we need is a little more sugar, so we're going to take a tablespoon, not getting too crazy with the sugar. Actually, let me grab this. All right, so we're just going to do a tablespoon of sugar. We're not 
we're not trying to re-ferment this whole thing. We just want enough sugar to kind of re-kick that yeast off. And then when we put it in there, they'll have plenty to do their job. We're just like so just wanting to kind of fire this fermentation off. I'm not going to shake this or rouse this up any. It'll, it'll uh, do its own work. So we're going to let this sit for a couple of hours and just keep an eye out for bubbling. Once we get bubbling, once we... This has had a head on it because I shook it up to mix in. Once we get something like this forming on this bottle, then we know it'll be time to pitch. So we're going to let this sit like this for a couple of hours. And then we'll come back and see if we get any bubbling in here. And once we get bubbling, then we can pitch into the other container. All right, gang, so it's been about 24 hours. And while there's no visible bubbling in here, if you take the cap off and kind of put your ear to it, you can hear some bubbling, some activity. Um, so it appears that we still have some kind of fermentation going on. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to our regular juice that we've added our sugar to and pitch that pitch that in and we're gonna and you want every bit of any sludge or whatever in the bottom you might want to give them a little swirl. We want all that in there. Side, then we're going to put our airlock on and we're going to keep an eye on that the next few days. Um, we'll come back at the end of the week, do a gravity check to see you know, if we got anything, but uh, I think we're heading the right direction. All right, gang, so it's been about a week and we're going to see how our reuse yeast came out. And when I say reuse yeast, I want to define it real quick. I'm not talking about the same original yeast cells we used with our very first batch of uh, fermented orange juice. Once we pitched that yeast in there with all that sugar stuff, they started eating, they started reproducing, they started doing their thing, and they started reproducing multiple generations down the line. Those original yeast cells died, died off and became the sludge down the bottom. Now sometimes there's still some active yeast, kind of gets caught up in the sludge or whatever, but generally it's caught in the suspension. When I say reuse yeast, I'm saying that we're still using, we're using the great, great, great grandchildren of those yeast cells from the first batch. We're just continuousing that on. We're not having to repitch or add new yeast. So when I say reuse yeast, that's kind of where I'm going with that is we're still basically getting the benefit of those, that first generation of yeast. We're still, you know, uh, using their lineage, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, as far as how the fermentation went, this was bubbling up pretty much the whole time so it's a good sign let's now check out our hydrometer reading see where we came out um, our first batch or uh, the original gravity on this was 1080 just like the first batch of uh, the fermented orange juice uh, that first time we got to around 10.1 percent alcohol by volume we we're somewhere around 1.00 let's see if we get a similar result this time All right, and oh yes, we might have even beat it by like one or two hundredths on the ABV rating, or uh, as far as our uh, gravity points. So again, we're in that 10.1, 10.2 range. So looks like we got another excellent fermentation. And again, to do that in a week, this has been done in a week, that's pretty fast fermentation too. Um, generally, like if we were gonna ferment like if we were making a homemade wine with like regular grape juice or whatever, it'd be X amount of weeks. And yeah, we'd get to 12 or 13. We'd start off with a little higher gravity. We'd get to 10 or 13%, but that'd be over two to three weeks or what have you. That's pretty quick. Uh, there's some of these other experiments I do, we get four to five percent in a week, but 10%, that uh, seems to work. So now the next question is, how does it taste? All right, you smell the yeast, but uh, we'll fight through it. You know what? That ain't bad, kids. For just being store-bought orange juice, throwing a low sugar, using quote-unquote reused yeast, man, that works. 
I could drink that. I'd probably throw some, because I've had it at room temperature, I'd probably throw it over some ice, but yeah, that's not bad. Um, again, uh, real quick to talk about reusing yeast. Uh, one of the things I've shown or talked about in previous videos when you do any kind of home fermentation is that you can, when you're ready to drink, throw it in the fridge and that stops the yeast activity that settles all that yeast down. If you're wanting to do this specific thing, uh, don't do that then. Because once you stop that yeast activity, it's hard to get started back up. What have you, you want to leave some of those yeast cells suspended. And if you put it in the fridge, they'll end up dropping to the bottom. So that's my only word of caution on that. But if you're always wanting to kind of keep something going, um, you know, this is a perfect way to go. Also, this might be something, because people ask me about using better yeast or whatever. Maybe you invest in a pack of high quality yeast, but if you always got some going, you could just keep using those future generations. And so, still saying, man, I don't want to buy, you know, a 10 pack of yeast for 30 bucks, well, whatever it cost. Buy you a single pack. You know, do a small batch and just reuse that yeast. With that being said, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.